Hi everybody, this video is going to be about uh, we're going to, a continuation of deductive arguments and we're going to talk about validity and invalidity and soundness in deductive arguments. So you might remember that a deductive argument is an argument that attempts to guarantee the truth of the conclusion or to prove its conclusion. Um, and there are two different types of uh, deductive arguments. There are invalid deductive arguments and valid deductive arguments. Now, uh, validity, usually in everyday conversation when you're talking to somebody, they might say something like, well, that's a valid point. I understand what you're saying. And what they mean is something like, that's a true point, or that is something that I tend to agree is the nature of reality. But in logic, it's important to understand that validity has nothing to do with truth. Although in a valid uh, deductive argument, true premises guarantee a true conclusion, validity is based on the structure of the argument. It's not based on whether the premises are true or false. Uh, and that's something that tends to throw people off. So don't think of valid uh, in logic as being true or false. And so I'm going to give you an example of a valid form of argumentation. Of argumentation. So because, uh, and I'm really sorry about my nose. I got to do the, the video right now and I'm super congested. So I'm sorry about that. But because it's based on structure, if you use the same structure each time, like imagine this is a building, if you create the same structure and the same conditions, then likely the outcomes of creating the same building uh, will be the same. It's the same with validity and deductive arguments. If you use the same structure each time, it's valid no matter what. Now it could be the case that you use premises and conclusions that are out of this world or that don't make any sense at all, but it's still a valid argument. Okay, so let's look at an example of a valid argument. Uh, this example is called modus ponens, which means way of affirmation. Uh, and it goes like this. If A, then B. So one of the premises of your argument, and it doesn't matter the order of the premises, but one of your premises says if A, then B. Now an if-then statement in uh, logic is called a conditional statement. Uh, it's also called a hypothetical. So if, if this, then that conditional statement. And then the second pre uh, premise, or again, it doesn't have to be the second, it could be the first. Um, it affirms A. So if A is the case, then B is the case. A is the case, what do you think the logically valid conclusion is? You're right, it is B. If A is the case, then B is the case. So this is the condition that must be satisfied for this to be true. A is satisfied, therefore B must be the case. Now let's, you know, oftentimes we use all these A's and B's and X's and Y's and stuff like that. Let's just make it an example. If I am a bachelor, then I am not married. Okay, so if I'm a bachelor, then I'm not married. And then I say, I am a bachelor. Therefore, the conclusion is, I am not married. Now again, the name of this form is modus ponens. And if we are to symbolize it, we could say if P then Q, this horseshoe shape means if this then that, and P therefore Q. And you can see it has this structure, right? But remember, we could say P first. The order doesn't matter. Um, kind of like in addition, two plus three is the same as three plus two. Now that's not always the case in logic, but in this case it is. So if P is the case, then Q is the case, P therefore Q. We could write it out in language. If I'm a bachelor, then I am not married. Um, I am a bachelor, therefore I am not married. 
And this is a valid form, but we still haven't really talked about what validity means. So this is a valid form of argumentation. We talked about the general way people use validity is true or false, right? Uh, but in logic, it doesn't mean that. So let me erase this. And we'll define validity. A valid deductive argument, there are a couple of ways logically to define a valid argument. One is um, true premises, a structure of an argument such that true premises guarantee a true conclusion. Another way to say it is that in a valid argument, if you have true premises, um, then the conclusion is true. And another way to say it is that if you have true premises in a valid deductive argument, if you have true premises, it is impossible for the conclusion to be false. Now why is this important? Well, it's important because if you use a valid argument form, uh, then if your premises are true, then of necessity your conclusion is true. Which means that if you're arguing with somebody else, there's no possibility of any untruth in your argument. But if you, um, so here we have a valid argument, true premises guarantee a true conclusion. Another way to say it, if you have true premises, then the conclusion is true. Uh, if you have true premises, it is impossible for the conclusion to be false. So three ways, typically, that valid arguments are defined. Now, an invalid argument, remember, validity only deals with form. It has, um, it doesn't mean true or false, although, although true, the concepts of truth and falsity are used to define it. In an invalid argument, true premises do not guarantee a true conclusion. Now, what do you mean by that, Justin? Well, let's say it another way. If you have uh, true premises in an invalid argument, then uh, the conclusion is not necessarily true, or we could say then the conclusion could be false. Uh, another way to say it is if you have true premises, it is possible uh, for the conclusion to be false. <clears throat> okay. So, we talked about a valid argument form called modus ponens. There's an invalid form called affirming the consequent that looks a lot like modus ponens, but it's actually an invalid form. Let's take a look at it. So, one of the valid forms of argumentation is called modus ponens. And modus ponens says this. It says, if P is the case, then Q is the case. P is the case, therefore Q is the case. The invalid form is called affirming the consequent. Now remember how we said that modus ponens means uh, mode or way of affirmation. Well, here, in modus ponens, we are affirming what's called the antecedent. The antecedent is this part that comes first. The consequent, like consequently, at the end, is this part, the Q part. So, in a proper modus ponens, you affirm the, the antecedent, and then the consequent necessarily follows. So, affirming the consequent is when, in the second step, instead of affirming P, you affirm Q. So, and this is an invalid form. So if P, then Q, uh, Q, therefore P. Now, 
remember that uh, the definition of invalidity of something being invalid is that it's possible to have true premises and a false conclusion. So how can you prove that an argument is invalid? Well, what you do is you attempt to think of two premises that are true that lead to a false conclusion. So let's, so just for a minute, think about this. Uh, pause. See if you can come up of, with an argument example where you put in actually existing things that you know to be true or false, in for P and Q, and for Q, but actually in the end, what you get for P is false. Okay, and I'm going to write one out right now, so hopefully you paused it and thought about it for a bit. If P, then Q, Q, therefore P. Uh, if, uh, if a person is a woman, then uh, the person is a human. If the person is a woman, then the person is a human. Notice here, this is P, and here we have Q. Now me, let's talk about me. Justin is a human. I am a human. Okay, now this is true. If a person is a woman, then that person is a human of necessity. And it's true that Justin is a human. But notice that what we've done here is we've plugged in Q in the position of Justin. Justin is a human, so we have if P, then Q, P. But what naturally follows from this, if we're affirming the consequent, um, uh, and then we're bringing down P, what would be the, the uh, logical outcome, or the invalidly logical outcome? It would be that Justin is a woman. Now, I don't want to talk too much about gender here or anything of that nature, um, and I'm not trying to present a sexist example, it's just easy to talk about this because we all generally have a certain concept of, of what a woman is and of, of that person being a human. Um, now of course men can be women and women can be men and things of that nature, but let's just live in the realm of logic here and not talk about social construction. So what we've done here is we have, if a person is a woman, then that person is a human, just, although in some places in the world, right, uh, this might not be the case, even our own society, people might not <laughs> consider that the case, and I mean that very sarcastically. Uh, in many places in the world, women are not treated as human beings, but again, let's not talk about that. Um, if a person is a woman, then the person is a human. I am a human, therefore I'm a woman. Well, what we have here is two true premises and a false conclusion. So because this argument has a specific structure, um, whenever you use this structure, uh, the argument is going to be invalid. So if you present an invalid argument, or if somebody presents an invalid argument to you, you know that they either need to change their, their premises such that it, it is valid, or you know that it's possible that no matter what they're telling you, that it could, their conclusion might be false, even if their premises appear to be true. Now it might be the case that um, um, that you actually end up like if we were to change this, if a person is a man, uh, then the person is a human. Justin is a human, therefore Justin is a man. Um, this is also an invalid form, right? Because it falls within the if P, Q, Q, therefore P, the affirming the consequent form. But notice now, everything is true. True premise is true conclusion, but it's an invalid form. So the person needs to reevaluate the way that he or she is arguing. To make this valid, you'd have to say, Justin is a man, therefore Justin is a human. This is a valid form. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, Justin, it could be like, let's go back to the initial example, right? If someone is a woman, then the person is a human. Justin is a woman. Therefore, Justin is a human. Um, 
Is this valid or invalid? Is this form valid or invalid? Correct. For all of you who said it's valid. This is a valid argument. And this is where the rub occurs, right? Like this is where people have a difficult time understanding why this is valid. Again, you cannot think of validity in terms of the truth value of things. Validity is based on the structure of the argument. Validity is that true premises guarantee a true conclusion. Now notice, here, the second premise is false. Um, the definition of validity is that if the premises are true, then the conclusion of necessity must be true. So notice that we haven't violated that definition because uh, a false premise could lead to a false conclusion or a true conclusion. Uh, the, the definition of validity is merely that true premises guarantee the truth of the conclusion. And so we haven't violated anything here, even though uh, there's an untrue premise in that argument. Okay, so that's an initial video about validity, and I'm going to continue moving forward with some other argument types um, that are valid and invalid argument forms. So again, a valid argument, let me just write in everything here. A valid argument is an argument in which true premises guarantee a true conclusion. Now, it could be the case that you have, in a valid argument, all false premises and a false conclusion. Um, but the validity, the structure of the argument, uh, would still be there. Uh, I know it probably doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but as you continue to engage in these topics, and as we move forward with these videos, hopefully all of this will make more sense in terms of validity, invalidity, and then we'll move on to soundness and strength. Uh, uh, and, and when we move on to induction in the future.